Alright guys, well, <laughs> the first half of the video had cut off, but to give you the brief summary, I was literally like, oh, I don't know if you heard that, so I'm just going to say it again. The first half of the video had cut off, but the brief summary is I was literally already dead, and then Moby's in close because I had too many apps open in my background, so I've just closed them, so we're fine now. And we're back in action with the team I'm trying to get to rank 4, no 5, so I can have Garuda. Because both of these guys are supposed to be at rank 4, but I don't have time to like use my hatchery and put them in it and stuff. So like, you know, they're just at 137 right now, but you know, just, just pretend they're at rank 4. You know, it's all in the mind. So this team works really well in the dungeon because like you just give you'll i'm fairly certain there is not even one person with pierce in this entire um era survival dungeon so that's never a concern there's never like the concern of oh well teddy bomb will give us all evasion but then like a cherub cupid or a what are the old Pierce monsters' names? A Thunderbird, you know, just being exaggerated, but still. Or something with Pierce would wipe us out? Like, there's no worry about that. Like, once you give Toluite positive effect protection, you're pretty much covered for the rest of the match. Only thing that would help this strategy is if she was slower. And you can't physically make a monster slower, so, you know, you're just stuck with this. You start off with stamina regen. If you need to heal the whole team, Poseidon has got one team heal, which, you know, that's nothing crazy, but still. And then, you've got the cleanse and stamina covered with Slumster. You know, you've got the Megaton, which, she actually has a lot more Mega, you know, life than I thought she would. Because I was like, oh, she's a Metropolitan monster, she'll only have, like, what? Like... I don't know, because I'm very used to seeing how low the life stat for. So, like, that's just a simple summary of the team. Which, the Metropolitan era, like, despite what some people like, some of the most made of monsters coming out of it, those being, like, Poseidonia, Slumster, uh, maybe Cuberion. It really depends on your taste in monsters, if you like Cuberion or not. You know, because, like, an artifact taunt monster okay sure he's not a weird monster who can give himself mega taunt and get wiped out with an aoe but he can't get evasion either so it's basically like it's basically like building a wall and then once you're done with it you never touch the wall again but you're still waiting on it to like defend you and since he has a heal move maybe you like put a couple bricks back here and there but you're you're really just not sure And then, boom. If there's two monsters that I've never used, I've never had, but I hate a ton. No, no, no. Oh, I knew she was going to do that. I saw it coming. That's why I had literally said no, no, no. Because I know, like, the AI, once their life is below 50%, they're like, oh, okay, it's time to heal. But, you know, little does the AI know, she had reverse healing. Which I love and hate that the AI does not know reverse healing reverses your healing. Because if it did, it would never kick in. It would be just like the thing where like, if you have evasion, none of the enemies will attack. But you want them to attack. You want them to like, exhaust their attacks and such. But it's also annoying. So luckily there is a Mega Taunt monster I'm trying to get to rank 5 soon. And that is everyone's favorite Garnixel. Everyone's favorite retired, but then unretired cherub. So, those of you guys who don't know, cherub are little, like, almost, you know, you see those baby. Oh no, no. I really don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm not gonna play it out myself. So, you know, cherubs are the those baby things you see in mythology where they look like an angel, but they look like a small baby with a big head. There are like three cherubs in this game, and they've always been quite famous. Like, 
there's Cherub Cupid, there's Garnixel, and there's Diego. Diego didn't really want to be a Cherub. Cherub Cupid got promoted to Cherub. And last guy, name is on the tip of my tongue, I'm gonna get it. Garnixel, the big Megaton monster. Apparently he got way too chummy with the village he was protecting. And then he ate too much, he got, like, for lack of a better word, fat. And, like, got demoted from Cherub. But now he's just a protector. But then, when the, uh, Elvira Demon Slayer Saga came around, they decided, yeah, he's still part of the Angels. Which I'm like, if he's not a Cherub anymore, then he's not an Angel anymore. Why is he in this book? Now, still, I couldn't really complain because, he, like, probably the only reason I beat that era saga was because of him. You know, and I used to use him as my Megaton monster, you know? Me and Cherub, we go way back. Yes. Oh yeah, just some nice protection. And then kill. Alright, so luckily we survived it. Please no cells for Toluite, thank you. Well, I want to get Toluite to rank 4 just so I can move on to like getting Garnixel to rank 5. Because he'd be my first rank 5 Megaton monster, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, so let me check him out. I use him here and there. He's still at only 140. He'll probably stay at 140 for a while. Because, like, the road to 150 is, like, an entire couple weeks. Because getting that many cells takes a while. So that's why it's good to have two teams. One team is, like, a team you're trying to get to one rank 4 or rank 5. Because if you have a team that's going together trying to get to rank 5, they just get more powerful with each other over time. And if they have good synergy, you've got a pretty, like, you're pretty set, man. Hmm. So, shock to all, I would have much rather than evasion double life. Which, that's the funny thing. Like, um, name's gonna punch me in the face. I always say that. There's the, uh, there's the... I completely forgot what I was saying. One of my neighbors is yelling. Well, whatever. Yeah, I've got like the loudest neighbors on planet Earth, man. Anyways, take a juice, stand shake. Plus 57 stamina. Okay, I was about to say, I don't... I hope this is not where I... Oh, no! He's gonna die of quicksand alone, isn't he? Alright, double life. Cleanse off you. Alright, you reset my cooldowns. That is a big problem. You reflect a lot of damage. You attack. Well, you actually don't attack, but you would've. Wall of flesh. Because he can double his own life, right? So that can lead um, someone with, like, a rank 5 Garnixel to get, like, over a 1,000 life. But, 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 do do do. I'm not going to hang around on the word but forever. At least I hope not. But, like... The King Autumn, who everybody praises for his outstanding life, can only increase his life by 50%. He can't do the, um, 100%. Well, not 100, it's kind of like the difference between damage boost and double damage. So damage boost is like the 50%. It increases it by 50. It basically cuts your number in half and gives you half more. It's like you go from... If you can only get things in, like, pairs of two, you go from two to three. You know? Instead of going from two to four. And then if you double your life, that's boom. That's just... Basically, you have your life, and it's a stick, and you have the exact same stick. And you just put them together, and that's your life now. Just a combined high life stat. So, oof, my cooldowns are reset. So now, recharge, recharge, divine energy just to have some healing before. 
And this note is usually never this hard, but still. My little hamsters, corrupted plus bleed plus trait disabled. Do the flop. That's actually a really nice move to do to your own team. Then I apply the reverse healing, because other than Ilian, the mouse over here, everyone on this team can do a bit of healing to themselves. So, boom, just give you shock, just to, you know, kind of twist the knife while it's in. Oof, no one has the stamina regeneration effect right now, so I'm going to have to apply it. Boom, you see he healed himself. Boom, regen, regen, regen. Oh, I thought he would die. Regen, regen. He's going to heal himself. You are really making this take a while, bud. Now I can just regen, regen, regen. The victory, okay. So Slum, 15 Nebula, what is that node for? Oh, no, really? Is it really time for me to collect my food SP? Thank you. Thank you for telling me. Alright, so here's another node with a lot of healing, which makes it oh so... Man, I really should give Slumster better speed runes, because right now, level 5, level 4, level 4. He is a slow fella. I really, like, I've got monsters who have better speed runes than him, and they're a lot worse than him. Like, I've really got to set that straight soon. But for now, what I'll have to do... Oh, no stamina regen. That's nasty. Unpatched hole. Turn that into positive effect protection. Big boss. Drain stamina. It's really annoying to deal with, like, Pumpko Seed stat, because, like, I know in, like, the earlier meta of the game, and by the game, I mean of, like, when the mythical started taking over, stamina draining was all the craze. Like, you would use, like, what's his name? I'm just gonna do this. You would use a flip, it was a thin boy. Whatever his name was, I don't remember him too well. It was a member of the Thalassa family. They had, like, cleanse, trait disable, and stamina removal. And you'd run them with, like, Pumpko Seed Staff and whatnot. And he would just be able to positive effect removal and then drain everybody's stamina. Like, it was basically what people loved the Lassa for. Except fast, because he was, like, a Golden Legends Pass monster. Which now, like, if you haven't already seen him in the meta, you'll probably never see him in the meta. Because, like... The day, the only time you will ever see an original era mythic in the meta is because someone was using armor claw for a challenge. Like, that really is the only time, at least for me, that I ever see it. So, boom, double my own life plus evasion. But unlike King Autumn's double, now 50% life increase, just like armors, that increase is permanent. Well, it's not permanent, but it's uncleansable, you know? So for those three turns, you'll guaranteed have it, even if they trait disable, even if they purr. But this double life isn't permanent. So I guess you could say there's an argument for having the double life and the, um, and the, I just had it on the tip of my tongue, 50% life increase. Which, you know, when I hear that, I just get so greedy. I'm like, oh my god, I want like 5 million health. I just want to increase my life this much, then this much. But, you know, I mean, I do know of the, uh, the glitch, at least I've heard of, at least. There's a glitch where with, um, Mick Flurry and Santerion, you can create, like, infinite life increase. And then it's just so powerful, his life stat, that he's just unkillable, and then you could just, I don't know, worry about killing them later. Which, I'm really interested to see how that works, because I've never seen it. I've never seen a video on how it works, because the only guy I saw who had posted was Monster Gaming, and not to be like an unnecessary bully, even though he has done a lot of bad stuff so it wouldn't be that bad, but his videos are so boring, like you know, I'm sorry, because even though he might have done some bad stuff, that still feels like rude to say, but his videos are just so boring to watch, sir. So, like, I never, I've never seen it. So, if anyone has, like, a link to them doing it, or a link to a video doing it, the uh, infinite life increase with, like, McFlurry and Santerion, I would like to see it. 
So go work now, laser beam sword. Recharge. Double my own life. Plus evasion. Which it's almost 2 million, but I didn't give him the best health earn, so it's not quite. Boom. I wouldn't say it's worth it to do this to either, because I'm relying on their healing to kill them. So look, the quicksand didn't land, and now it's going to take longer to kill them. Last warning. Look, but that reverse healing ships off a good 20%. Then... Recharge... A war rumbles... Darn it, the one monster, the one dork that I wanted it to land on, it didn't. Um, so I'll just save this for the next round. How much damage are they going to do to Garnixel? Oh, none. Really wish I could have reapplied that stamina regen right about now. No, drowned in land. Wall of flesh. Take a juice. Alright, so things still worked out pretty well. Boss of all bosses. Cleanse all enemies. Signing autographs. Poseidon near wall. Now hopefully this lands on all, because I've seen this is very risky with monsters with tough, because look, right there. He doesn't get the reverse healing, and all he gets is like a heal. Which, I forget which video on my channel it was, but I have done a video, like, lately, where it was just, like, a healing monster who had a reverse healing finisher. It was, like, Dark Uma versus... I forget his name. It was one of the many corrupted Megaton monsters, Hammer Grown. And, like, they were going at it. The healing was enough to contest with the, uh, sunburn he was giving me. Which, the elemental advantage, um, dot will always, like, almost instantly kill you, so it's always a big threat. Boom. Oh my god. Yeah. Tough is, like, stronger than, um, bulwark. Because bulwark is 50% chance for things to not land. And I swear to you, things land on them more often than they land on these tough monsters. Like, look. Very surprised shock land. Landed the... Sorry, I gotta use grammatically correct English. And victory. Oof, node 19 would be a long one. But let's do it. Oof. Slumster and Robonaut cleanse. I'm fairly certain I've done this before and I die on that node. So that's about it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Comment and I will respond. Subscribe to join the Crab Army. We are nearing 50 subscribers, and that's a big milestone. Thank you all for 27, no, 47 subscribers. And that's about it for this video. Your favorite Omni's Crab, signing out.